Manchester United 3, Burnley 1. And you know what? A win is a win. Back to winning ways after that shoddy performance against Newcastle. Me and CM are going to dissect it and all that good stuff. So make sure you drop a like, subscribe if you're new and share the twins to another dimension. Now, goal scorers for Man United, Scott McTominay. It was a Ben Me own goal from Sancho's great effort, good effort on his side. And Cristiano Ronaldo getting a tap in from a mazzoline of a shot from Scott McTominay that was tipped onto the post. And Aaron Lennon, before half time, got a goal back for Burnley. Sheesh! He's been around the block, hasn't he? But yeah, man, you know what? All the performance was it mainly the first half. Because the second half, I thought there was a massive drop-off. And maybe towards the end of the first half as well, there was a drop-off again. And I didn't even think, you know, in our prime moments of the game, the energy was where it was supposed to be in terms of pressing closing down the ball carriers of Burnley and just, you know, being effective in those counter-attacking moments, in those pressing moments, as Ralph Ragnick always speaks about. The thing that kind of bailed us out, in my opinion, was the fact that Burnley, they, were, they weren't at their optimum physically. We know how good prime Burnley can be at just frustrating opponents, being physical with them, getting low, down and dirty. But today... Burnley, they tried to attack us. They possibly saw what Newcastle did and they tried to do something similar. They didn't really press us high. They did press us at times, but not continuously. But they tried to attack us and that opened up the counter-attack. And I think that's where we got most of our goals from, really. That counter-attacking moment where we were just clinical, especially in that first 30 40 minutes maybe yeah mm. 30 30 odd minutes we we're very clinical in those moments and that's why we scored three in the for the first time in ages in the first half i think they said something like the commentary team said we haven't scored three in a half since the 9-0 winner southampton so there's a positive at least ages. there's a positive i thought yeah, overall though the performance was much better than newcastle you know i, I will say that um it was a step down from the first 30 minutes against Crystal Palace. Because like I said before, Crystal Palace, we were pressing. We were intent. Hundred. We wanted to go for it. We looked very dangerous. The ball carriers of Crystal Palace had no time. You saw them often knocking it out of play because they just didn't want to take that risk. I think we've got a way to go to build back up to that point. Because I think Ralph Rangnick has realised that 30 minutes of intense pressing is not good enough in a 90 minute match obviously man so we're gonna have to build up the fitness of these players especially with different guys isolating and all that he's gonna work with different guys and he's gonna make sure that we get up to the fitness levels but first and foremost we may have to change the way we play maybe that 4-2-2-2 is not gonna do the job every week maybe sometimes the team needs more whip maybe sometimes i, I don't know i think we can be a very predictable team at times, Man United. And that's not Rao's fault. That's the previous managers, the coaches, all that stuff. And maybe sometimes the players as well. He needs to find a way to make this team less predictable. You know? They find different ways to score. I always get onto that. Find different ways to score. Different ways to affect the game. Know when to change the tempo of your play. You know, you're playing slow and then you switch to fast and you surprise the opponents. Man City do all the time. Slow tempo, slow tempo, but quick tempo, close range passes. And then they find that killer one, boom, it's a goal. So we need to find a way to, to get combinations going and control the tempo of the game truly. Because I thought at times, players got tired and lost control. We did not control that game. We lost control and Bernie... Look, I'm going to let you get onto that one, but let me just finish off all the other positives. Well, Scott McTominay, he had a man in a match performance. He was fantastic today, especially in the first half, driving us forward. And that all came from Matic being in the lineup. That all came from... If we had a DM like Nemanja Matic, we could be all right. 
He's mm. disciplined. He keeps it simple and he knows his role. He knows what he has to do for the team. The man you match, stay disciplined and allow Scott McTominay to drive forward, be a threat in the areas where his strengths lie, yeah. which is in the attacking end. Being that late midfielder, entering the box, so getting a strike on from outside the area. That is what Scott McTominay thrives in. I feel like he's been misused up to this point mm. because people are using him as a straight CDM when defensively, all right, he may be tenacious, he may want to crunch into a tackle, but defensively his positioning is not great. So a lot of the time that just makes us easy to play through. Yeah. And maybe so, uh, we haven't been pressing. You know, under Ole, we weren't a pressing team and Ralph, we pressed for 30 minutes, but we haven't pressed since. So maybe that may get better pressing when, when we start pressing as a unit, as a team, but still, you have to use each player to their strengths. And Scott McTominay just isn't a straight defensive centre midfielder. No. I thought Luke Shaw on his return looked very strong. I love the way... But this is one thing that you have to love uh, with Luke Shaw compared to Alex Tellis. Luke Shaw wants to drive the ball forward. He wants to get shots on crossing the ball. All that good stuff and drive the ball forward. Tellis, he'll cross in the ball... But he'll most likely just stay wide. Whereas Luke Shaw, he doesn't mind being inverted and driving inside or driving down the wing. There's a bit more variation to his game and he's a bit more powerful mm. in comparison to Alex Tellers, which is why when he's at his best, Luke Shaw is a first, he's a star, you know? I thought Jalen Sancho as well. You know, obviously the on goal, Ben Lee on goal was taken away from him, but I saw promise in his performance today. Um, still a long way to go for Jaden, but you saw him aggressive off the ball and on the ball. He wanted to drive at players. He wanted to. He exploit. This is the smart thing about Jaden Sancho: is he exploits the right positions, the right moments. He uses those moments and says, "All right, now is my time to attack." I and do. I think he's finding his way in the Premier League now and finding out when those moments are going to arise each and every time. Because I saw moments where. He would just switch it on, sprint down and ask for the ball. And I think that's what led to a chance or two or even a goal. Mm -hmm. His aggressiveness to analyse which position and when was the right time to attack Burnley. And, you know, hopefully that continues with time. He will get better, like I said. Have patience, people. We need to stop looking at these price tags. I know it's a price tag, but Jayden Sancho is a young player. And he needs time and he needs a system around him, a very good system around him to almost pattern up and be the best version of himself. There you go. All right, people. Now, you, you got to bear with us a little bit. The reason why this episode's coming a little later than we would have wanted is because we're both not feeling ill, come down with a little cold, stuff like that. Bit of mucus in our throat, so... We had to take the night off, even though, like uh, me, I went on a few shows, discussed the game with other people. Please do support those channels. I put the links out on Twitter to go and see them. But once we were ready to record, we kind of just felt like, you know, it would have been better for us to rest up and come back in the morning. We go again. So please drop a like for that. Subscribe if you're new. And let's get a get well soon chain in the comments. But yeah, like uh, Cappy said, it was a better performance much better performance but it could have been a lot worse Burnley had quite a few chances and I think because of the way the crowd reacted or the way things fizzled out I don't think we noticed it at the time but Burnley had a lot of chances where they got in a lot of headers that if they went to the either, you know, either side of the goalkeeper David De Gea maybe that scoreline would have been a lot different and the reaction of the fans would have been a lot different as well I thought Burnley, look, our defence is something we need to work on. Defence is still a huge issue. With Harry Maguire, who's right now is low in confidence and low in form, he looks a shell of himself. But I know Harry Maguire can be better than he has shown, but right now he is far from it. And it just bewilders me that he is, you know, continuously given these chances in the first team to, to kind of almost stop the rot, but it isn't working. At some point, you have to think, all right, we need this brother to take a break. We got Lindelof, but he's gone off 
to AFCON and then we got uh, Varane. So you understand maybe there's not a lot of choices. I know Phil Jones back there waiting for his opportunity, but I don't know if he'll get it. But yeah, um, the choices are not. We don't have a lot of centre-back choices. So Maguire will probably have to continue to play. He is the club captain right now, whether we like it or not. So we're going to have to have him out there. I'm sure the players value him somewhat as a, as a captain, as a leader. Must which do. is why he continues to start whenever he's available. But still, it's a coaching thing. It's positional IQ. So many situations where if another better team that's more clinical comes into that game, even Wolves, if they're able to be clinical on on Monday, I think it is. Mon not, not, yeah, Monday, mm. I think. If they're able to be clinical, we're in trouble. If they create the same amount of chances as Burnley, no doubt they'll probably take more than Burnley did. So we'll see, but you know, energy output unfortunately was still low. A rough Rangnick team requires high energy pressing, winning that ball back as soon as possible, and then once you do, you counter attack and you spend less time carrying the ball, you know, taking touches on the ball. And I still saw in that game, it was more of the same, whereas we spent more time on the ball where we shouldn't have. And that that gets us into problems because a lot of our players are not press resistant. So when you take a lot of touches, the other team are invited to press you on. Mm -hmm. And then when we are pressed, we make mistakes. So why not just take one or two touches that we did in some parts of the game and just progress the ball. Progress the ball, has plenty of dynamic movement and that's how you're going to create chances. Not by standing stationary like we said last episode. You know, in terms of Wolves, they've had quite the break. You know, they haven't played a Premier League game since the 19th of December with all these postponements and all that stuff. So, bad. so it's going to be interesting to see how they come into the game. You know, they could either be fresh or they might be highly rusty or it could be a bit of both. Maybe they're rusty at the start and then they get into the game. So, you know, United have to be ready for a high energy game at home. We must be ready. So... What I'm looking for in the next game against Wolves, what I'm hoping is going to be worked on in the training ground is progression, showing more energy, getting those players mentally prepared to have that output over at least 60 minutes of the game right now because 90 minutes is unrealistic. At least 60 minutes so you have the first half and a bit of a second half to do that output and then when the players get a bit tired you can make a few changes and kind of switch up the way we're playing so that we can still control the game but we don't have to you know almost exactly. release the output of that high intensity pressing so at least 60 minutes is what i'm looking for can the players do that i don't know but we will see it's all about progression i don't want to see us have that kind of game and then we dip again like we did against Newcastle. Palace has to be that Palace is the current high standard I'm holding everything by. Burnley was a little below that, so I'm expecting it to go back up and co to continue to increase. That output to continue to increase. I'm expecting the performances to continue to increase. And that to be that is what matters. Progression, consistency. That is what Manchester United have lacked as of recent years. And that's what we need. If you want to compete at the top, consistency is key. You see it with Manchester City every year. How, look at the run they're on in the Premier League. It's incredible. That is consistency. That is the players buying into something and understanding what they need to do when they come into the team each and every match. Exactly. These players need to get their heads switched on. They need their mentalities changed. And they need just everything, their fitness, their regimes. They need to rewrite everything and start afresh. We said, a lot of us fans said that we would give these players a clean slate. But it's clear after the few games that these guys now need harsh criticism. They need harsh criticism, but will they take it? Or are they just too arrogant to take it? Do they think the fans don't know what they're talking about? It's going to be interesting, very interesting to see. So many tests, so many tests to see if there is real progress. Because right now, most of us are off Ralph. It's now onto the players to show that they are willing to learn 
and winning to strive for greatness in a Manchester United shirt because that's all that matters. You play for this club, you play for the history, you play for the badge. So many tests to see real progress. Only time will tell people. Make sure you drop a like, subscribe if you're new and share these twins to another dimension and last of, last but not least man this is the final video for the year so make sure you have a happy new year celebrate when it becomes 12 a.m mm -hmm. and listen stay safe stay healthy stay prosperous have a prosperous new year all that good stuff and make sure that your new year's resolutions are written don't fall off you know i'm watching you don't fall off again i saw you write it last year and then you went to the gym for one week and stopped continue to go for the rest of the year believe in yourself believe in your abilities and when you do that when you do that anything can happen trust me i'll see you lots in a bit make sure you subscribe like this video everything free no need for a criminal mind control all subliminal twitter tiktok insta digital join this crew follow my twitch and i might rate you if you pass through ends in this my gang bust down doors or phase right through